people, this is William Jones making videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think and use logic and use reason and realize that religion is fake. All right, people, for this video here, I might, I'm not the last to find out, but I found out in one of the uh, groups I'm in that uh, the fanatic from the, uh, the Christian rap group, the Cross Movement, has renounced Christianity. And I was like, what? The fanatic? The fanatic left Christianity? And so he had a video about 24 minutes, 33 seconds, I think it was. I had to watch the whole video. I had to watch it. And some parts of his video sound just like my story. You know, you're sitting on questions. You, and sometimes people, you, I don't know if you, you just don't have the right people to answer. I was teaching the people around me, so it was hard to ask people things. I did have to go to YouTube to try to find out some things. And uh, Dark Matter 2525 was one that really helped me. When, when they did a video, uh, you know, talking about, you know, if you're born, you know, it might not have been Dark Matter 2525 on that one, but the, it, it could have been, I'm not saying. But the video was asking, you know, or saying if, you, if you're born in this region, chances are you'll be this religion. Or if you're born here, you'll be raised as that religion. You know, and I was like, hmm, that's, that's true. Because if you live in an uh, Islamic country, chances are you're going to be a Muslim. You know, America is highly Christian, so you're raised as a Christian. And these things started making me think. And not everything has to be about the Bible. Some things, is, is like I say in the videos, you use logic and you use reason and you start to think. And, and the whole Christian thread, it's, it's like they have tightened this thing up, tightened it up. And, and you just believe it, even no matter how stupid things sound, you believe it, now it's starting to slowly unravel when you start to think about it. But then you, later, I know, like for me, I, I, I can't even believe I, I, I believe that stuff. It's ridiculous, a man walking on water, bringing people back from the dead, uh, a serpent talking, a donkey talking, Noah's Ark, an axe head floating on water, the prophet outrunning a horse and chariot. These things, when you think about them later, they sound stupid. But when you're taught a certain thing all your life, and the, all the adults around you that you trust, they believe it. And you know, Grandma wouldn't lie to me, that's Grandma. And I'm not going to say she's blatantly lying to you, but she's telling you what she was taught. She's telling you what she believes, and beliefs are not always real. And these things get ingrained in you, and you believe them. So as I'm saying, as I listen to the fanatic story, and his name is uh, Brady Goodwin, as I listen to his story, I, heard, I just heard a lot of things uh, in his story that, that, that just sounded like my story. And it, and it comes down to the wire where, boom, you leave. You leave. Now I know, uh, see back in the early 90s and uh, through the 2000s, you know, I myself was a Christian rapper. Be Love the Prophet. Check it as I drop it. And you know, I did CDs and shows and all of that. And, and in the midst of doing those things, somebody was like, yo, you heard about this group? And I'm like, who? It was like probably about 99 before I even dropped my album and uh, I think in 2000, I had dropped an EP, had dropped, I had dropped cassettes before that, you know, that's way back, I was doing cassettes, and then the CDs came out, and I started doing, I did, I did two CDs, an EP and an LP, and it was like, yo, you heard this group, and I, and I ain't heard them, and it was like, you know, the, the cross movement, and it was like Wu-Tang, but a Christian version, and no doubt, I, the first, I, didn't, I didn't get to hear the uh, Holy Culture, the first one they dropped in 97, when I got on to them, they had dropped the House of Representatives in 99. And so I checked out the House of Representatives in uh, No Doubt 
it was fire. It was fire. And so I rocked with them, you know. And especially when they did that song that that holy on the holy culture. Uh the, the lead track on that. I'm fire. Then they went off to do solo albums. Uh I, I enjoyed the ambassadors joint. I enjoyed Fanatics joints. You know, the rhyme style he had and everything. It, it was just the, the voice is just different. And I don't know, he can drag on the beat, be on beat. I don't know, and, and the wordplay was, was crazy. And I was with it, you know, loved it. Then they uh, brought in uh, The Truth. And uh, I came up with the uh, the two dudes from, from, from the UK they had on the track. On, uh, the, I think it was on the Holy Culture. No, it was on, no one on the Holy Culture. Which one was that? Uh, I don't even know why I'm focusing on all of that. But anyway, anyway, let me get back to what I'm saying. So anyway, the fanatic has left Christianity. And if he ever sees this video, I'm talking to him. And I'm talking to you that's watching it. Now you're, now you're going to receive all of the nonsense from the Christian community. You were never really a Christian. You were never really saved. You understand? Oh, the devil has got your mind. Oh, you on the wrong path. You, you're going to hell. All, all of this nonsense is coming now after you've dedicated more. Look, you've, de you've dedicated a lot of your life to doing it. And you did it more than the other Christians. You were not a, a, a just go to church, sit in the back pew, and don't want to be seen person. You're an upfront person doing things. I was always an upfront person doing things. I was at Creflo's church and in the uh, running, partly running the evangelistic ministry, going out, knocking on doors. Always two of us, just like Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm always the main person that's knocking and doing the talking. I'm the one catching people and talking to them. Main that I let a lot of people into the Christian myth. A lot of people into the Christian myth. People, I mean, my CDs. People would mail my CDs all over the world. They they send them out to to to, uh, to the UK. They would send them out to Africa. They send them out to different places in America. I remember one time one of my daughters was like she went to uh, Tybee Island on a field trip and. And she said she was talking with one of her classmates, and some guy overheard her talking. And 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 from what he heard, he said, "Hey, is, is B Love the Prophet your father?" And she said, "Yes." And it was like, "Yeah, we play his CD here." And I'm like, "Wow." I had someone tell me they saw me on a TV show where they were talking about different Christian rappers and artists, and I was I was featured in it. I, I don't know who made it, never saw it, but it was like. They had you in there, so I mean, it was no thing to be on TV. And I've been on, had been on the news and other programs, talk shows, what have you. So this is not far fetched. There's, there was footage out there of me, so it's not far fetched at all. But uh, this brother was out there. Fanatic was out there. You know, got degrees in the theology, out there speaking and teaching and had done the rap thing, he's past the rap thing now. And, and so now everything he has done comes into question by the Christian community. And, and this is the part I want to mention right here, is I was watching watching one of the videos with the Christian, apo ur no, urban Christian apologists, where it's four of them, I'm not saying their names, but it's four of them in an hour and what, 25 minute video or something, and, and, and what are they doing? I'm, I'll tell you exactly, because I ain't going to mention their names. If they see it, you'll be like, oh, he was talking about us. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Yeah, it was one hour, 25 minutes, and two seconds long where they got to have a little powwow where they're talking about the fanatic leaving religion. And I listened to some of it. And as usual with Christian apologists, it's nonsense. Normally what they speak anyway is nonsense. So now they got the, these clowns got to get together and break down his 25-minute video of what he said to make him say what he didn't say 
or talking about he, he didn't understand the text this way, or you know, it, it, it's, it's it's ridiculous the things that they say and do. Instead of just being a man and hear what the man had to say and be done with it. Be done with it. He's a grown man, 45 year old grown man who made the video, who said what he said, and why can't you leave it at that? Now come the attacks from the urban apologist clowns. That's what they are, clowns. They got to break down every single word. I don't like when, when he said on this part, and see right here he said, he said it. Man up and just suck it up. He said it. Rather than just be in the dark, he like when I left religion, what I did, I made a whole video why I left. And that's what I meant. What I said was what I meant, and that's why I left. There's no, oh, he, he was depressed. I've been depressed as a Christian, so what? I have gone through the worst times of my life when I was a Christian with no relief from a God, no help from a God. I just had to do like anybody else who didn't believe in a God and just had to go through it. Time healed that thing. Not God sent some angel or some magical holy power down on me. No, I had to live that thing and still deal with residuals of it now. It's called life. It's called life. But the apologists, they can't just hear what you say and leave it on. No, they, they got to they gotta tell you what you said. They're going to tell you what you did. Tell you what you meant. Tell you that what you did, you, you did it for the wrong reasons. They have all these excuses that they have to bring into play to make their little feeble minds happy. That's what they do. They say what makes them happy. They say what makes it better for them to sleep at night. They say what they have to do to protect the, the, the God myth in their minds. That's what they say. They will lie and say whatever they need to say to make them feel better and justify what somebody else did in the little Christian circle. They do it all the time. They're a bunch of of hypocrites. Hypocrites. You got a whole pyramid of these ap urban apologist clowns. And then you could give one of them a PhD title and put him at the top and then everybody falls in line with what he say and he said and they all parrot what he says and they think they really got something going on on a, a mythical religion. A mythical religion. They lie all the time. What's your source? What is your source? And if you show them a source for what you're saying that contradicts their belief, you can show them the source. They are going to discredit the person that said it. That's the first thing they're going to do is attack the person that said it. Are you aware of what this person's peers say about them? I had one of them lie to me say that about, about, a, about a certain scholar that said something against them. And when and his, own, his own peers don't really respect what he said. I read in a book, somebody, I just happened to be skimming through one of my books, and the person that wrote that book, who was a scholar, mentioned this scholar that this Christian apologist says his peers don't respect him. And the man spoke highly of the man and said that many scholars follow the patterns, some of the patterns of this man. So they will sit there and lie to you. They lie. That's what they do. They lie. You show them a source that, that, that goes against what they believe, they will reject that source. They will go find another source. or, or no, They will go find something said by another Christian scholar or Christian apologist, always a Christian scholar or Christian apologist, and they'll find something that that person said that refutes what this scholar says, and they'll side with that. That's what they do. They, all, they, they can't learn. They, are in a, they, they can't learn. I've told y'all this. 
they, they got to stay here. Hey, we just found some information that's twisting them here. Oh, uh, no, but th this person has said this, so we're still right. Hey, there's information that says that this, this scripture here contradicts this other one, and that, you know, uh, yeah, but then this, this scholar over here, see, if you go back into the Greek and you look at what it says here, you see, you got to understand the etymology, you got to exegesis it, and they got to get back here. They're going to give you a bunch of word salad. A whole bunch of word salad that sounds good. They're a bunch of smart dummies. A bunch of smart dummies. They sound smart, but they're dumb. They are dumb. And they will lie. Christian scholars, I've seen it. The Christian scholar twists the narrative. They always got to twist the narrative of something. Yeah, I know it says this, but see, you got to understand that, and then they're going to they're gonna lie, because you always got to understand that. And understand that means they get ready to twist something and lie. God, I mean, got me hype up in here. And one time, Jews say, oh, he, he drinking alcohol. Guess what? If I am, so, guess who's not a Christian? Guess who's not? Me. I can sit here with a 40 ounce in my lap and do this video. Guess what? So, I can do that. I'm not bound to your rules. It's like they, they feel they, oh, I'm reading the comments on, on, the, uh, on the video talking about Fanatic with the four Christian clowns, right? And, and, and the people in the video, of course, we're, we're, we're praying for Brady. His name is Brady Goodwin. We're praying for Brady. And that's the thing is, I tell people, if, I didn't ask you to pray for me. How do you know what I need? And this is the arrogance of these people. You're going to pray for me what? What makes you feel better? You're going to pray for me what helps you sleep better. You're not going to pray for me what's best for me. You're going to pray what's best for me according to you. Or did you ask me what I... If you're going to pray for me, then you need to say to me, Hey, I want to pray for you. What do you need prayer on? But if you're going to tell me because I say I left religion, now you're going to pray for me, then what is, what is your prayer based on? It's based on... Your own selfish things that please you. You haven't asked me anything. Don't pray for me. And I you tell people, I'm going to pray for you. I don't want you to pray for me. Well, I'm going to pray for you anyway. That's arrogant. So what you're saying is, I'm in a better position than you. So I'm going to pray for you. You're not in a better position than me because you believe in a myth that you can't prove. That doesn't make you any better than me. And so they're all in the group. Oh, we're going to pray for him and pray for his family. He's a grown man. He can't, he been handling his family without your prayers. So why would he need your prayers now? And you don't even know him. Oh God, God you always gonna you always gonna get sent to hell. That's guaranteed with Christians. They're always gonna send you to hell for not believing what they believe, and they want you to believe it exactly how they believe it. Not just believe, but believe it how I believe it. Because it always turns into, oh, you need to accept Jesus. And just so y'all know the football game on playoffs is on. I might glance off. It's under the under two minutes with Cincinnati and Tennessee. I'm kind of looking at a tie game. But anyway, you'll be like, oh, you need to accept Jesus. They accept Jesus. Now, this one, you need to be baptized. This one, you need to speak in tongues. This one, you, you need to come to the prayer meetings. This one, you need to come to Bible study. Or you have to believe in the Trinity. They have all these doctrines, that, that that's what, which is why they have so many sects of the religion, because... From the book, it's so confusing that they can't agree on anything. They can't agree on anything. It's, it's just 
for, for the book to, to say God isn't the author of confusion, it's confusion. Ask a Christian to explain the Trinity. And I used to try to do it too. See, you have a car. You got a car. See, you got the steering wheel, it's the car. You got the body of the car, it's the car. You got the wheels or the engine, it's the car. All of them is the car. It's all the car. That's how it is with the Trinity. There is, they got different functions, but they're all the car. Or the, you got water. Sometimes you see water and it's in the form of water. Or you see water and it's in the form of steam. Or you see water and it's in the form of ice. You might have seen it in three different forms, but it's still water. That's how the Trinity works. Oh, well, see, I have different, I'm the same person, you might see me as friend. And then this person, they'll see me as, I'm, I'm dad. Or my wife, she sees me as husband. They might see me different ways, but they still see in the same person as all me. All this foolishness, when you say explain the Trinity, and then show me the Trinity in the Bible. Oh, well, 1 John 5 and 7 says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. You know, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. A verse that was added later and still doesn't tell you nothing about a trinity. But you, they want you to believe the way they believe. Believe the way they believe. Or else they cut you off. And when they cut you off, they're going to tell you the devil got your mind. And you need to believe the way we believe or we're going to cut you off. That's what they're going to say. Alright. So look, look at here. I'm glad the fanatic left, and I'll be glad when other people leave and become free from religion because I, I said I, I really couldn't learn until I left religion. And it, so what? So, so you ain't had no knowledge till you left religion? Yeah, I had knowledge, but it was still based on religion. If somebody taught me in class that uh, there was a Big Bang or, you know, the dust from space gathered together and, and somehow from the pressures or whatever and it revolved around the sun and what have you and blah, 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 you can't receive none of this. Why? Because all you know is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you reject everything you was taught about things. They tell you about evolution. Well, I can't believe that because I know God made each individual animal. I know God made man from, from the one virgin, say, from the dust. And then he made the woman from the rib, and the other one, they just made them. So one was made in the image, one was made from the dust. So, I mean, but, but all, everything that you have learned in your life, the foundation is still was you had that whole, that whole religion thing there. So, you, yeah, you learn things, but certain things you kicked out because you couldn't accept it because it didn't line up with what the Bible said. But once I found out the Bible wasn't real, I could start to learn. And I don't have to turn things away. I can learn them. I could learn them openly because it was, it was all stuff, things to be learned. But Christians don't have that luxury. They don't have that luxury. They have to learn what, what lines up with their, their, their theology, with, with their doctrine. They have to stick with that. They can't go outside of it. They're, they're trapped in it. That's where they are. So again, to the fanatic, brother, I'm glad you left. Do your thing. I still listen to cross movement music. You know, and when I say cross movement, I mean the whole umbrella uh, of, of cross movement, you know, uh, music. You know, people think for some reason just because you left religion, you somehow you don't like music anymore. So now I don't like music. It's, it's just music. And it was, it was hip hop still. Nice beats. Word play on, on the lyrics, you still liked it. <coughs> so, and like, leave my music. People are like, why you still listen to your music? You don't believe that. Oh, uh, it's still me. I still made those beats. I still wrote those rhymes. <coughs> I still perform that stuff. It's still me. It's mine. And it allows me to connect with the me at that point in my life. When people say, I wish I could talk to my younger self, I can't go back and direct my younger self, but I know where the mind of my younger self was 
when I listen to the music at that time. When I listen, I, I listen to myself say things, and 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 I'm like, uh, dang, I don't believe none of that. But I killed that. I killed that verse though. I don't believe a word of it. But I killed that verse. Did you do the word play on that? Me and my kids still talking about it. Hold on, the kick of the field goal. God dang, Cincinnati won. I'll be dang. Anyway, what was the other thing I was going to say on that? Um, oh, another thing they will do is... Say that they might quote something that someone said. But, and, 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 and they, and, oh, one of the famous ones they love to use is, is Bart Ehrman. Christians love and hate Bart Ehrman, but oh, they love him for the fact that he's not a believer. And then if he says something that, that, that goes their way, they want to quote him. Oh, Jesus, he said Jesus is historical. Anyone that doesn't believe Jesus is historical, you know, that's just, that's just ridiculous. So what they what they just heard is they didn't just hear Jesus is historical. What they heard is the Bible is real. And anyone that doesn't believe the Bible is real is ridiculous. That's what they heard. But that's not what was said. The man said Jesus was historical. He mentioned nothing about the Bible. If you listen to what he says about the Bible, he'll tell you that the gospels aren't real. Just that someone inspired people to make these fictional stories about a person. That's what he says, but that's not what they hear. So they want to quote what's what he said. They'll quote what somebody said, not knowing that unlike you, people change what they think. When they learn something new, the direction changes. Unlike you, who can't change. And like the dude gonna tell me, I, I, I'm listening to the, to the Christian scholar and Bart Ehrman debate, and then the, the, the Christian scholar agreed with something that Bart said about, oh, this shouldn't be in the gospel, this story, come on, this is ridiculous. And the guy, agreed, the Christian scholar agreed, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is, and it shouldn't be there. And the guy gonna say, well, he has a book, and in his book, he says, what does it matter what he said in his book? when he just said it out his mouth. If somebody told you to put everything you know into a book, one book, could you do it? Put everything you know into a book because next year you'd have to re-edit that book because you learned new stuff. And some things you thought you believed then, you don't believe in it now. You want to kick that out the book. We change. Things we do or, or things we think are not written in stone unless you're a Christian. All of their stuff is written in stone and can't change. They can't go here. They can't go there. They have to stay here. It's written in stone and they can't change it. Which is why they get so upset when someone like the fanatic, someone like you, leave religion. Now they got to make videos and tell everybody why you left after you told everybody why you left. Grown person tells you. It's not a little child. What's wrong with you? I don't know. My, my hand hurt. You sure it's your hand? No, maybe my foot. You miss your foot? No, I think it's my stomach. It's not a child. It's a grown person who's working, paying bills, raising kids, have spouses, and when they tell you something, accept it. Stop telling them why they left when they told you why they left. It's that simple. But Christians, they, these apologists, especially them, and some Christians, they can't get it through their head. Everyone doesn't have to think like you. Everyone doesn't have to believe in what you believe in. Believe what you believe and let that be that. You don't even have to let nobody know what you believe. Do it in your closet. Pray in your closet. Jesus tell them pray in your closet. But they got to pray at the graduation. He didn't say pray at the graduation. He said pray secretly. Go in your closet and pray. Everybody don't have to see you. Then you're making it about you. It's, 
is just ridiculous. They can't just let people live. They have to judge everything people are doing. And no God is coming down saying anything about anything. Oh, so they have a church over, they have a homosexual church over here? Did God say anything about it? Well, he said it in his word, but did he say anything about it? Did he do anything about it? Like if I told somebody I got a dead body in my basement, uh, I think somebody's going to come check that out, right? They're not going to be like, hey, the police, everybody know he got a dead body in his basement. They're coming in and going in the basement. And I say basement because I live on a slab, and I don't want y'all to think I got a basement with a body in it. I live on a slab. For those who don't, might think like a Christian and think what I'm saying is real. The point is, the point is what I just said. The man said what he said. Listen to what he said. And let that be that. Clowns make a whole video because they think they somebody in their little circle with the little Christian people following who don't know anything, who think they are something when they nothing. They don't have authority to judge nobody to send nobody to a hell, which doesn't exist anyway. Talking about a God they can't prove, a Jesus they can't prove, a Bible full of contradiction, a Bible full of stories that can't be verified that that historical artifacts show that the story is not real. Can't verify anything. And everything they have to verify the Bible comes from Christians. They all want, oh, what an early church father Eusebius said. Who cares what he said? You might well say Pastor Jackson said. Of course he's going to say what you're saying because he's a Christian. And he's a church father. He got to keep the people in line. So that he lives well. Early, early church father said, no one cares. The Bible says, don't care. The scriptures say, it's not a scripture, it's a passage in a book. You don't call a line out of Harry Potter a scripture. It's a passage in the book. I don't care what spells they cast in Harry Potter. That's in the book. Hogwarts in the book. Reminding them they're in the book. Jesus and the disciples and apostles, prophets, are in the book. They're not in the real world. That's like you try to do the Fat Album where they brought Fat Albert into the real world. It don't happen. Fat Albert stays on TV and you watch him in reality on TV. The Bible is in a book. The book is in the book. It goes no further than the book. That's why everybody you condemn to hell doesn't matter. Your God hasn't said a thing. He hasn't gone on a, on a Facebook, on a Twitter. He ain't made a YouTube video. Nothing. Just a bunch of clowns defending him. With no proof. No proof. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I thought I'd be nicer than this on the video. I, I, I don't know. It kind of just upset me that they... Uh, so what they, they look like I said to fanatic. If you see the video, they're gonna attack you, and the other people they're gonna attack you. Their minds are are so locked in in, in one direction they can only see they, they they can only see tunnel vision, tunnel vision. You left religion, they can't understand it. So they they're gonna make I don't care what you tell them. You could tell them precisely why you left, and they're still gonna make up their own reason why you left. See, he was depressed. See, so that gave Satan a way in. And then once Satan do that, you know, well, one lady said, he, he got too educated. He got too educated and didn't listen to God. He couldn't communicate with God anymore because he, had, he was smarter than God. He got, got too smart. So you need to be dumb to be a Christian? Is that what you're telling me? You need to be dumb to be a Christian. All kind of did the devil got in. See, he wasn't listening to God no more. See, he didn't seek his answers from, from God. He, he, looked, he looked for secular people. He looked to man for the answers instead of seeking God. He went to God and prayed. I did the same thing and came out. Seek and you shall find. And you're, you're going to find the truth. And the truth is, 
Christianity is fake. If it's a religion, it's fake. It's based in a belief, not in reality. It's a belief system, not a reality system. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here. Got me heightened. Apologist clowns. Oh, that, oh, another thing to say before I go real quick. They always want to go live. Oh, well, come on. Come on my platform, on my channel, and go live. Why would I go live with you, a Christian, in front of other Christians? How, how am I going to look a non-believer, a realist, on a page with a bunch of Christians? They're not going to hear a word I say. They're going to agree with everything you say. So what's the point? That's no different if I had all of you that watched this video and I say I'm going live and I'm bringing a Christian on here. How is the Christian going to look to y'all watching the video? You, you, everything they say, you're going to be this BS because most of you, you were a Christian. And I tell them, I already know your side. I was on your side. But you don't know my side. I got more on you because I know your side and I know my side. So when you're about to explain something to me, why? I already know it. You used to do the same thing. You trying to tell me the playbook of the team I played with for most of my life. I already know the playbook. But you don't know this playbook. I know your next move, but you don't know mine. They don't get it. Why would I have to debate a Christian on, on my, I could debate a Christian on my platform with no sources. I don't have to crack a book open, anything. He could come in here and, and, and pull up, have a stack of papers with different sources, and I could just, at the end I'd be like, that's BS. God ain't real. And all my people would be like, yeah, I don't want to hear that BS. We don't want to hear that crap. And then this, this church father said here, I'm just, the show is Jesus then. My people, yeah, 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 show us Jesus. You can't show us Jesus. Don't hear that. My people say, I know I get all them animals on that ark. Yeah, yeah, see, that's bull. bull. He ain't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's the point of a debate in those situations? Because that's like you got the Republicans and the Democrats together. Republicans going to go for the Republicans. The Democrats going to go with the Democrats. Nothing's going to get solved. It's pointless. It is pointless. So if y'all want to believe, believe. It's just that we believe too, but we know now it's foolishness. And we're not going back to the foolishness. It's foolishness. I think that's the last thing I wanted to say. I think I got it all out. So again, congratulations to the, uh, Brady, the fanatic, good one. Enjoy the rest of your life uh, in freedom. Freedom to learn without being bothered with the church world. Do you. Live the rest of your life and do you. Alright? And uh, people, I'll see y'all in the next video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like the video to change the algorithms. Share the videos if you, if you need to. Share them. And I will see y'all in the next video. I got some more videos coming. I already shot them too. So they're coming. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.